All right, hello everyone, what's up? Good to see you, I see you out there, Wade, what's up? Diane, Michelle, Leah, Jackson, Brittany, good to have you guys here, Steve, what's up, man? All my friends, good to see you. So this is gonna be really fun. Never been to Brampton, Ontario, Canada. Don't know where it is, would like to know. Um, specifically where you live. No, just kidding. Uh, but good to have you guys here. We're gonna go through the principles of a design, as you can see, kind of rolling through the background there. And uh, we're gonna do some vector portraits today as part of our daily creative challenge. So this is gonna be really fun. Please take a, I know you have a camera full or a phone full of photos of yourself. So use one of those and uh, let's make a quick vector portrait and we'll go through all the ins and outs. Jennifer Poole, hello, Robert. Awesome, fantastic. So uh, I will switch gears. We'll go to the file and let me just pull up the uh, Behance page just so uh, we kind of know where we're at, where we're at in the whole scheme of things. This is, as we scroll down, we went through all of these. We are down to the day seven vector self-portrait. So um, day seven, only two more days, and I'm going to be so sad when it's over, darn it. Um, but yeah, this is the type of challenge, <clears throat> if you're watching even the Encore presentation, to you really push to its limits. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I encourage you to do so. So get started. You're gonna grab this file, which uh, awkwardly, at least for me, has a picture of me in it, which again, I needed to give you something, right? And I know I have the rights to this person's likeness. <laughs> so you could mess with it all you want, but I want you to use a picture of you if you can, if you can swing it, just because it makes me embarrassed. All right, but here we are, vector self-portrait. As you can see, uh, we're gonna create a vector portrait of yourself using image trace. We're gonna clean that up. We're gonna have some fun. Ooh, oh, that's funny, Stoney. You have more cat photos than ones of me. <laughs> Take a, use, use a photo of your cat. That works as well. That's so fun. Uh, love, I love cats. I love all animals. Animals are just cool. They're like, I don't care what you do for a living, how much you make. I wanna know what you smell like. <laughs> Just joking. But those, that, there's animals for you, huh? Animals are weird. So here we are on this layer two. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create just a quick backup of this layer uh, in case we need to go back to it. So I just click and drag that down to the plus sign. Boop. And now we have sort of our original. And this is one we're gonna do the image trace on, okay? <laughs> Here it is. All right, cats are the best. What would cats say if they could talk? I feel like they would say just as much as they do now to humans. Even if they could speak English, they would still ignore us. <laughs> They'd be like, uh, leave me alone. They would not, they would not respond to you at all. Huh. Mm, kitties, love them. Okay, right here, we have this wonderful photo. Uh, it's already embedded. So sometimes you'll have to embed a photo, right? So just click that button that says embed, okay? Sometimes you'll have a photo that's pretty large and uh, you'll have to go through your rasterize, these rasterize settings, okay? So it might ask you to rasterize it. And I would usually do screen, 72 pixels per inch, because again, we're gonna simplify this when we do an image trace. Um, yeah, click okay, right? That simplifies that embedded image, okay? All right, <clears throat> I wanna welcome Susan Wilson here as well. Good to see you, Susan. I'm so glad you made it. I'm glad you're here and let's get this party started. So when you have a photo selected, it's gonna have give you the ability to do an image trace, right? You can click that right away and see what happens. What does happen? Oh, it's actually not bad. Let's undo that. And let's see, for the image trace, we have a drop down of a bunch of options. This is so fun. Chris Olson's in the house. Cause what if instead of, what it did is it gave me like a black and white logo look. That's what it did initially. That's not what I want. I can go down here and say, hey, you know what? Give me three colors. Selecting three colors. Here's sort of the three color version. Now, you ready for this, Rick and everyone? Like, what I would always do is undo that, 
right? And then I'd go back in and I'd try six colors, right? I used to do that all the time until recently, within the past six months, I realized that there's this little button over here. Actually, probably about two months ago, Orlando Erosina, I think he showed me this, the image trace panel. Look at this, just click right there. Oh, here's all the settings you need. Again, just click right here. If you remember anything, let me highlight, how many ways can I highlight this? Can I highlight it? I don't know. But this little button right here, click on that, that opens up this panel and it gives us all this amazing control. Uh, that you guys now have. So this is awesome. Yes, Wade, I didn't know about this panel for years. And I just like, I'm like, man, that's that's what happens in Illustrator. I mean, it's like 30 years old. It's It's been around. It has tools upon tools upon tools. So I can go through and kind of determine which one of these presets I want to use and which ones I want to dial in. So I kind of want something Okay. Yeah, it's like now they tell us, like what? It's probably my fault. The reason you don't know something is because I didn't know something and I, I'm, I'm to blame. Uh, so I'm sorry about that. So you can, you can change from three to six colors. That's right, Bliss. This is the thing, like, well, geez, I kind of want something in between three and six colors. That's this slider right here. I can drop that down to five colors right? And it'll give me five colors. Maybe I want four colors. I typically go for the least amount of colors while keeping uh, the most amount of detail or recognizability, if you uh, will. And Rick, that's how you learn. When you're bored, if you just click buttons to see what happens, that's how you learn. You can't really break, you can't really break this, right? This is actually kind of cool too. Um, I think I'm gonna go with four, but look at how lumpy I am. Look at this. Like, I know I'm old, but why does it have to like emphasize all these wrinkles? Is there a way to smooth it out? I used to show the smooth tool on these lines and different things like that, but all you need to do is right down here, change the paths. Let's take the paths in, right? Taking that, dragging that to the um, left, and it's smoothing out all of those curves, all those paths. I can say, hey, you know, give me less corners as well. So dial these in and get the look that you want, right? I just think this is absolutely amazing. Thank you, Afroja. Love this. So do I. It's so good, right? So I'm gonna, I'm kind of thinking like 14%, 18%. We can adjust the uh, noise as well. So we could, let me zoom out right here. Higher value means less noise. Let's increase that to 70 pixels. So this is good for my shirt. Noise down here, so it's at nine pixels. It's getting all that junk, right? And then we drag that up. It'll get rid of a lot of it. But what happens is it does it on a global scale. So it actually eliminates that detail from my face, which I do not want. So I'm gonna show you how to clean that up in a second. So let's just drag that back over. Maybe we'll give it more, some more corners. And really I'm focusing on that eye, by the way. I'm making sure that eye comes through. That's pretty good about 18, 39%. Also there's this, so we have a method. Do we want to have cutout paths that abut one to the next? Or do you want to have overlapping? I typically like overlapping that creates stacked paths, but I still realize that it does actually, still does the abutting as well. Um, so for what it's worth. Okay, there we go. So there we have, we have uh, 575 paths four colors, so many anchor points. Whew. That's okay. By the way, right up here, these are all your other settings, right? So photo, black and white, uh, outline, right? They're all right in here as well. Line art, right? You get the idea. So play with what you want, do what you want with any one of these. When you're done, you could just go ahead and close that panel. 
So this one, I'll even duplicate that, right? So this is gonna be my expanded version. So right up here, let's go ahead, expand it. You ready? Boom. Now we have access to all those lovely lines. <laughs> ignore white is a cool option too, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I should have did a ignore white because um, when you don't do that, you're gonna have a white background. But look at all these paths that we have here, right? First off, notice that this is all in one group. So I'll right click, I'll just say, hey, you know what? Ungroup it, boom. And here's all these paths. It looks intimidating, I get it, right? But the thing is a lot of it's this junk down here that I don't need. So we can go ahead and clean that up, right? So again, you know, what would have been easier is if I would have just freaking worn a, a black shirt. I'm always wearing black shirts. Why on this day did I not use a black shirt or wear one? So we delete that background, right? We could start combining this stuff. What I would do is I would select it all and we could start link or uh, we can start making this one shape. So we could use this shape builder tool, right? And just start r scratching over this. Scratch, 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 scratch it. Just making those all part of like one shape like I'm doing right now. This is still pretty intense, right? Because there's all these little dots that I'm not getting to. Is there an easier way? I certainly hope so. Felicia's here. Hello, Felicia. Good to have you. Good to have you. Right in here behind the paintbrush is the blob brush. The blob brush allows you to make... Um, it, it will give you a brush stroke that is a fill, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. Come in right over here, click and just drag. I am actually um, wiping out all those points like so, right? Is that nice or uh, that should be doing that? Gosh, is it? That's what I would typically do. It's probably not selected, is it? Um, anyways, ultimately what I wanted to do is I wanted to eliminate this entirely. Just so you know. Right? I was just going to get rid of it. Is that okay? But let's do this. Let's cut this out. Let's take this. This is the only piece I want. Let's cut it out. Let's go in here. Let's just get rid of all this stuff. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Get it. Get it. Get it. You quickly go from image trace to vector cleanup. That's what this comes down to. Okay, so there's roughly my head, which still needs to be smoothed out. I get it. Let's paste this in. Boom. Let me try this one more time, because I don't know. This should have actually joined them all together. Yeah, there we go, it's working. So just select, the thing is just select the shape. In this case, it's gonna be, you know, this black shirt, okay? Use the blob brush, and as long as that layer or that um, path, or excuse me, that um, shape is selected, you're adding to that shape. So that's what I'm doing right now, okay? We can control the brush size by open and closing brackets on our keyboard. Smooth that out like that. Go like that. There we go. So there we have the shirt. Of course, we're having issues with this color right here, right? This I want to be black, right? We could actually come in, we can select this color Right, this fill, and we can say, select the same fill color. That might be one way to change it, right? I can select the same fill color and then I can change this to black, right? That's one way to do things. Another way to do things is really just jump in, select everything, and use our trusted recolor artwork. So edit colors, recolor artwork. Right in here, we'll go to advanced options. You can see, sure enough, there are four colors. We can hit edit and we can start to adjust this accordingly. Shoop, shoop. You get the idea, right? Um, I want to make me maybe a little bit more. I want to remove a lot of the color, right? So for this one right here, 
We want to take down the saturation. Right, I'm kind of making it black and white right now, but I want to make this mid-tone a little bit darker. So that's what I'm doing, making the, those mid-tones darker. And I can make the highlights lighter if I want to, crank it up. You can see what it's doing right there, right? I can make it all white if I want to. All right, you guys, you guys get the idea. We'll keep this somewhat of a color. And I'm kind of liking this tint. I don't know, is that working? What do you guys think? Right? Yeah, I don't know. The nice thing is I could change this any way I want. I personally like the warm tones, right? So we'll go with like a nice warm tone like that. And then what I can do is I would actually throw another color behind me on a new layer. And uh, I would throw in a lovely sort of blue color, something like that, right? So again, we're just kind of playing with the darks and the lights. Cool. You liking the warm tones, Wade? Awesome. I like them too. All right, so this is working out okay so far. Still might have a case where I have a lot of this, a lot of this kind of stuff happening. These warm tones, so what I'll do is I typically like to organize things a little bit better, right? Yes, it's very Andy Warhol-ish. Thank you, Muriel, you're exactly right. So uh, I'll typically select the um, highlighted color, the lightest color, and I'll do a select the same fill color. It's gonna select all of it. Command X, cut it out, put it on a new layer. There we have our highlights, like so. Um, and it's, you know what, I'm, I'm thinking that's not gonna work. It's not gonna work as well as I thought. I still have to have the eye and some of this other stuff on top of. So let's just take this, cut this, oops. The reason this is happening is because when I outlined it, so back here, we'll go to image trace, Right in here, when I did this, there we go, is this part right here. I actually thought that would help me out. But if I did it abutting, then that means I could put all my lights on top, my mid-tones on the middle layer, and my dark colors on the lowest layer. But what's nice is I gotta go is go in and, you know, that's why I have that backup layer. Anyway. Let's move on, shall we? Do all that cleanup that we want to do, right? Because I'm thinking, okay, well, shoot, look at this. Look at that craziness. Look at all this. This is what we need to clean up, right? And again, we could still clean it up by combining those or just getting rid of uh, these parts like so. So I'm going to get rid of some of that. And maybe we will hit... Uh, shift B and we can still kind of use our blob brush right in here if we want to add some more highlights. You get the idea. Makes it all one shape. Bring the eye back. There it is. Uh, oh, thank you, Juan. You can select everything and do like the divide. You can do sort of subtract overlapping shapes. That's a good call. Um, yeah, good call. I think for some of this, like, yeah, I need to have like this little dot. What is that anyways? That actually should probably be the highlight, right? So let's just select that, hit I, make that the highlight and start to customize this the way we want. And same thing for this shape. Remember this forehead right here, this is going to be a little bit of an issue.
Yeah. Welcome to my world. Yeah. All right. Oh, you like the alfalfa? <laughs> All right. Cool. Okay, so um, some of these parts, again, these are abutting lines. I don't really like abutting lines, which is why I uh, selected overlapping, but they're still kind of abutting, right? Because uh, what I typically want to do is for a shape like this, I want to smooth it out. So right under here, underneath the shaper and pencil, there's this smooth tool. So you select that smooth tool. You, want to, you don't want the whole line smooth, but you just want this part. So you just click and drag and smooth that out like so. Another thing you can do is you could use the pencil tool and say, hey, you know what? Drag from here down to there. Oh, come on now. Drag from here down to here. Come on now. And it will redraw that line. Maybe I got to do it in smaller segments. Who knows? Smooth it out. Smooth it out. There we go. But do you know what? I don't have to keep switching to those different tools because if we double click on the pencil tool, guess what? If you hold down the option key, it'll toggle to the smooth tool. So in some cases I can redraw another, oop, dang it. Make sure you get land on the line. In other cases I can hold an option key and kind of smooth it out. Okay. Chances are I did this a little much, so I don't know if it's going to look very good. Let me turn on that other layer. Boom, there we are. Smooth it out my forehead, and that looks pretty good. So that's typically what I'd want to go through and do. Uh, am I holding anything on the keyboard? So yeah, I'm definitely holding things on the keyboard when I uh, have the pencil selected, the option key, and then I can kind of smooth, smooth, smooth out this part, and then I could use the pencil to kind of, you know what? Oh, dang it, why is it? Having a hard time right here. You wait till the asterisk goes away, which means it's not gonna draw a new line. Drag it down, connect right there. Come on now. Maybe I gotta connect to a point. Anyway. Ah, you get the idea. There it is. And yes, play with this some more and clean this up. Very Andy Warhol-ish. Um, all right. Cool. Alt on Windows. Thank you so much. Cool. Not crazy about this highlight that I drew in here. I'm actually going to get rid of it. Because I don't think it... I don't think it works. Right? What do you guys think? Again, you could do a select all if you want to. Let's try this. Select all. Select the smooth tool. Right, there's a lot of lines selected. You can see they almost like abut, but they kind of overlap. But here I can kind of smooth out all these different parts, right? And redraw where I need to. Pencil. Let's not eliminate my Adam's apple completely. Okay, you get the idea. All right. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and uh, clean this up a little. A couple ways we could do this. Let's take this. Copy. Paste. Select. Make a clipping mask. There we go. Clipped and ready to go. Let's just turn off that background and I will resize this like so. So it kind of fits the whole page. Okay. Let's play with these colors a little bit more. Selecting everything. We're going to edit, recolor artwork, and have some fun. Brights, Renaissance, grays, pastels. Yeah, I don't know. Not quite. No, no. Let's go to the brights. Boy, this is messed up. Darker tones. Lighter tones. 
background. I'm kind of changing it back to the way it was. Silly me. But you get the idea. I think that's working. Click OK. All right. <clears throat> Okay, there we are. And again, don't forget that you could always go back and start again as well. So coming in here, let's go to these options. Wait for it to load. And I encourage you, especially if you're watching the Encore, to go through and uh, change these different to these different presets. So right down here, black and white logo. Awesome. Ready for this? Sketched art. Silhouette. Come on, line art. This is probably the weird one. So this line art is the one that's been the hardest to kind of dial in, but uh, that's how that works. Cool, so upload what you create, and I'd love to see what you end up with and post to Discord. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys soon. See you tomorrow. Thank you. See you, everybody.